A powerful list type in C Sharp that is not often used is the dictionary. In this video, I want to quickly go over what it is and how to use it effectively so you can add this data structure to your toolbox. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code and we're gonna start off with a basic console application. I'll even clear out what's here. And what we're gonna do is look at the dictionary. Let's start by just seeing what a dictionary looks like. So I create a dictionary and notice that it's gonna ask for two things, a key and a value type. So I'm gonna say for this one, int and string, we're gonna look at what each of these things does. Okay, and I call this um, rookie of the year. And I'll say new. So this is a generic structure, this dictionary, and it asks for two things, a, a key type and a value type. And so I've said that the key type is going to be an integer and the value type is going to be a string. You can change those. But what a dictionary is good at, think of an actual like dictionary you hold in your hand. If you still remember what those are, um, you look up an, a word and you find the definition. And so the way you find something in a dictionary is you look it up based upon the word, which would be the key. And so you, you know, you look under, you know, the J section to, you know, find the word that you're looking for that starts with J. Um, so that's what a dictionary is in real life. And that's what it is in C sharp as well. We're going to look up based upon this key value, this key. So, um, this key is a unique value that cannot be null. So we're gonna look up in this case based on an integer and this value can be anything you want. So we can have this be a repeated string or not. So let's see this in action. So we're gonna create a, we're gonna add a few, rookie of the year dot add, and it's suggesting Mike Miller for 2000. I'm not sure, but let's go that. Uh, Mike Miller, let's change that to, um, John Doe, and then Jane Doe and John Smith. Cool. But notice that I could make this Jane Doe twice in a row. Now for rookie of the year, it doesn't really make sense, but in this case, that's perfectly legal. However, I cannot say 2001 here as well. That would be a problem because we have now a repeated key. And if I were to run this, we'll get an exception. So I run this and we get to the spot and it says an item of the same key has already been added. The key is 2001. Okay. So we, we have an error here because we tried to add the same thing twice. Now, if I change it to 2002 and I were to run this, then it, it runs just fine. We don't have any output from this, but uh, it runs just fine because we can keep adding. Now, what's the benefit of a dictionary over something like a list. Well, a list just holds one value, which can be a complex object, but it's still just one value. And we can have repeats. Whereas with a dictionary, the keys cannot be repeated and they're easy to look up. So I can say, let's say console right line. I'm going to say rookie of the year for the year uh, 2002. I put that in square brackets. And if I run this, and it's going to start in the other window, but it says Jane Doe. So it's looked up based upon the key value. And this is a very efficient lookup. So we now have a way to look up the rookie of the year for 2002 based upon this key value pair and really the rookie of the year for any year. Now, if you don't have the rookie of the year in there, then we have a problem, right? But what it's also allows us to do is this can keep being expanded. As we add more years, we just add another number here. So that allows us to easily look things up. We can also do things like say, if the rookie of the year contains 2002, contains key 2002, then we can write that value for 2002 as well. That way we can see that it, you know, it verifies that yes, Jane Doe does exist, but if I were to change 2002 to be 2004 instead, which is valid, now when I run this, we get no printout here because we checked and it does not contain the key for 2002 anymore. 
Let's actually move it down. It doesn't really matter, um, but it's for us visually. So but now we have a gap. No problem. We just need to check if it contains the key. All right. We can also do things like a um, a try to you know try to get that value out. Um, but this is is pretty easy to do and allows us to then you know do something based upon that information. Okay. So that's what a dictionary is. But there's so much more a dictionary can do. It's really helpful for lookups. Okay. It's really helpful for lookups. But let's take it a little bit further. What if we had a dictionary of type string string? And we said, let's call this uh, wish list equals new. Okay. So I'm going to add things to my wish list, but I want to say, it's, it's trying to make a suggestion here, but I'm going to say wish list dot add. And I'm going to say for Tim Corey, then I want the wish list is, you know, a new computer. Um, let's, let's do it this way. We're going to say new list of string. And in here, we'll say an Xbox. There you go. An Xbox, a Tesla, and a pizza. Because, you know, those all make the same. I said string here, but I need to say list of string. There we go. So now I can create, I can say, hey, does Tim Corey have a list? Yeah, I can look up by, by name and then find Tim Corey's wish list. And that's right now an Xbox, a Tesla, and a pizza. And I can add more to this. There's Billy Bob, um, who also wants an Xbox. No, he wants a PS5. And he wants a, a Ford. And he wants um, a... Uh, hoagie. I spelled that wrong, didn't I? Yep, I did. Um, oh, there we go. Um, sure, hoagie. Is that his little hoagie? I don't think it is, but that's okay. Um, so now I can start adding in, you know, new things, and I can access these things however I want. So I can say a for each, for each key value pair in wish list. I can say for this person's wish list, here's all the values. Let's print that out. So now I have three wish lists, right? So now I can see Tim Corey's wish list is Xbox, Tesla, and Pizza. Billy Bob's wish list is a PS5, Ford, and a Hoagie. And Mary Jane's wish list is a house, a car, and a sub. Cool. So we all have radically different values on our lists. Um, but that shows us that we can not only uh, store simple things like, you know, a key of an integer and a value of a string, we can get a bit more complex, like saying a key of a string and a value of a list of string or a list of objects or whatever you want. But this allows to very easily access anything you want. So I could say, well, I want to access the wish list for, um, for Tim Corey. Okay. And I could say, um, you know, let's just print the whole thing out. It's going to say list of string, but that allows us to access that list directly. Okay. Um, we can say, there we go. The position zero item. That's a little better. Um, Xbox. Okay. The first thing on Tim's list is an Xbox. So that allows us to access more complex things and put more complex things into our dictionary. A dictionary is not something you use a ton, but knowing how to use it, knowing the fact that your keys cannot repeat, which means that you're assured that you'll only have one rookie of the year for 2001, or you'll only have one wish list for Tim Corey. These things are important. And that's where a dictionary can really help with, first of all, inserting values. You can do a, a try catch around something if you want to make sure that you don't insert something that already exists. But also when you go to access it, it's very easy to access. You just say, hey, I want this value. Or I'm gonna, if it has this value, I want them to access it. And so this, this uh, dictionary allows us a lot of freedom and a lot of um, benefits when those occasions come up where it is useful. So definitely put this in your toolbox as a data structure to know so that when the time is right, you know how to use it well. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.